And now uh, our new director of the Saban Center at Brookings, Tamara, Tamara with us. Thank you, Martin. Thank you so much to all of you for a fantastic closing panel discussion uh, for our forum. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me first start by congratulating you. You have been such tremendous, active, engaged participants. Over three days, we've had six panel discussions. We've had five keynote speeches. And as you know, four very intensive, very constructive working groups and lots and lots of informal conversations, building new connections, building new relationships, and expanding the community of people who have become engaged in our work over the last nine years that we have held the US Islamic World Forum. We've covered a lot of ground in nine years. In the early years when we came together, we sometimes heard a lot of anger, a lot of grievance. Uh, expressed, and we spent a lot of time discussing differences. And while all of those are not resolved, uh, I was really struck, I have to say, coming back to this forum after a couple of years in government, uh, by how much the conversation has changed. What I've seen over the last three days is a lot of discussion about common projects and common interests, about mutual respect and reciprocity and about what we have learned and what we can learn from one another. This forum is an incredible endeavor. Uh, it's taken the vision, dedication, and hard work of a lot of individuals to bring it to fruition. I want to recognize just a few of them now before we close. First and foremost, of course, we would like to thank His Highness the Emir of the State of Qatar, uh, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, and the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim bin Jabir Al Thani. Uh, he shared with us such thoughtful remarks on Tuesday, and together with Ambassador Martin Indyk, the Prime Minister is the one who initiated this project over a decade ago and made this annual forum a possibility and a reality. <clears throat> We've also had the fantastic cooperation of the Qatari Foreign Ministry's Permanent Committee for Organizing Conferences, led by His Excellency Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed bin Jabir Al Thani, the Assistant Foreign Minister for International Cooperation Affairs. And I'd really like to thank him and his entire team, headed up by Ambassador Abdullah Fakru and uh, Malik Asufji, our good partners, and also the team at Qatar Airways who made it possible for all of you to get here. Um, the entire Saban Center and our Brookings Doha Center here in Doha uh, have been working for months to make this conference a reality. I'd like to ask all of my colleagues from Doha and Washington to stand and get a round of applause from our participants, please. really in, invaluable work from all of you. And let me particularly highlight the role of the director of the Project on U.S. Relations with the Islamic World, Steve Grand. His, his deputy, Duria Badani. Where is Duria? And, uh, and their staff, Akram Al-Turk, Julie Song, Rebecca White, uh, Gail Chalif, and uh, Jamana Kadur. Uh, and <laughs> and I also really uh, need to extend our gratitude for the wonderful cooperation and work that they've put into the conveners of our four working groups. What I'm going to do now is summarize very briefly the results that have come out of the eight hours of discussion that many of you have participated in over the last three days. As you know, we had four working groups, one on a culture of compassion, one on water security, one on new mechanisms to promote the Muslim charitable sector, and one on democratic transitions. Uh, so briefly in turn, uh, let me begin by thanking Karen Armstrong, the convener of our Working Group on Compassion. Compassion, a core value in religious traditions. 
Uh, and this working group brought together eminent religious leaders, social activists, business people, to try and find realistic, practical ways to make compassion more of a force in our world, uh, in our shared world. So they had a couple of key takeaways, one international and one local. Uh, internationally, the working group agreed on the value of establishing an international group composed of leaders, activists, and business people to do a number of things, including creating a roadmap for practical models of compassion in local communities, and to strategize on how to message and communicate the idea of compassion, both locally and internationally. And they also talked about how to realize this value at the local level, uh, to focus on education, to create manuals that local communities can use in implementing the value of compassion in their work, to highlight uh, issues uh, of concern to women, and to involve diverse communities, including non-Abrahamic communities in their work. Our water security working group was convened by uh, David Michel, Amit Pandya, and Syed Iqbal Hasnain. Uh, they sought to improve cooperation on water issues in the region, uh, a crucial environmental issue with security implications uh, and implications for development as well. They've agreed that they're going to produce a white paper summarizing recommendations <coughs> for policymakers on this crucial issue. And they've agreed to keep working, communicating, moving forward to build a collaborative network uh, to work on data sharing, collaborative monitoring, and modeling, uh, and to ensure that they're going to bring into their work existing networks on water security that are already underway in the region. Thirdly, our working group on developing new mechanisms to promote the Muslim charitable sector convened by Dean Dilley and Elizabeth Ryan at Patton Boggs. Thank you so much for your work on this. This is a group that brought together uh, government and the nonprofit sector uh, and, uh, and philanthropic institutions to talk about challenges to charitable giving resulting from the emergence of law enforcement and anti-terrorism uh, initiatives that have imposed a special burden on the Muslim charitable sector. And the group considered how practically to solve and overcome this burden and facilitate charity uh, by establishing, for example, a new independent organization or working with an existing organization that can provide information that will enhance the confidence of those donating in this sector and that will ease the operational challenges for charities by mitigating risk associated with law enforcement. They also talked about the need to build capacity and improve technical assistance in the Muslim charitable sector so that they can meet the reasonable expectations uh, imposed by law enforcement. And they agreed on shared interests in advancing good governance, best practices among a range of stakeholders, and the need to increase coordination among all of the constituencies that the working group brought together. And then finally, our fourth working group on democratic transitions that was convened by our Brookings Doha Center colleagues, Salman Sheikh and Shadi Hamid. They brought together a very wide range of voices from countries in transition in the Arab world, together with US and European officials, to discuss the challenges facing democratization and the opportunities and dangers of external engagement and assistance. They spent a lot of time talking about economic assistance, the need for greater clarity in how that assistance is provided, and about the needs of those on the ground and how assistance can meet it. Uh, they talked about a thin and elusive line between political conditionality and political interference, that you have a, a, a reasonable expectation that when you, you give money, you give it for certain things, but you don't want to be heavy-handed, uh, and the need for greater dialogue to establish shared interests that assistance will, uh, will realize. They also talked about the important role that external actors play in securing economic recovery where transitions are threatened by economic crisis and the need for long-term support 
uh, focused on investment, trade, combating corruption, developing infrastructure, and also agreement on the need for support to civil society uh, to consolidate democracy, but that this must be done in a way that's careful, that's transparent, and that is neutral. Uh, and they agreed that they have more work to do, and they're going to continue talking in country and issue-specific uh, formats. So I think you, you can see from that very brief summary that uh, we've done, thank you, hot off the press. Uh, I think you can see that there's been a tremendous amount of work accomplished over the last few days, both in increasing our common understanding through these large discussions and in the, uh, the slow boring of hard boards in the working groups. And I hope that you can uh, look on this forum as we look on this forum, which is as one element of a conversation that goes on throughout the year, uh, whether it's online, through the relationships that have been forged, uh, and, uh, and that we certainly hope to continue this conversation with you, and we look forward to your active involvement. Let me close with uh, one more very important thank you and one housekeeping announcement. I have to thank our interpreters who have done such an incredible job. Thank you so much. Every year without fail, interpreting accents from more than 50 countries. Uh, and then finally, for those of you who are staying here in Doha or who are from Doha, I wanted to let you know that the Pakistani foreign minister will be speaking at a public event hosted by the Brookings Doha Center today at 5.30 here at the Ritz in the Moktasa room, and you're all welcome to join. With that, let me again thank you for coming, thank you for your participation, and we look forward to continuing our conversation.